So, um, so yeah, a great performance. Um, obviously, given all the circumstances, uh, you know, supposed to fight someone else. Mike Davis pulls out. You get a short notice opponent. Talk yeah. about like all the emotions that went on. It was you were excited for a fight. Obviously, the pandemic's going on. You get excited for a fight. Then he pulls out. Then you don't even know if you can fight. And then someone else steps in. And then it's just a lot of emotion in such a short period of time. So talk about that. Yeah, man. Uh, it was uh, honestly for me. It was uh, that was not a surprise because the guy pulled out already twice, and that already happened. It's it's felt for uh, to me like a deja vu, you know. <laughs> like uh, once the first time the guy didn't show up, second time he pulled out uh, for some reason. And uh, when they scheduled me with the third time, uh, third time when they scheduled me, I said uh, to my manager that I didn't want to fight this guy because I think he didn't deserve. But then he. At some point, I really wanted to fight also because I was mad. You know, twice he didn't show up. He messed up my camp. Then I, uh, I fought uh, other guys for one week notice, both of my fights, both of my other UFC fights. So, um, I mean, I, di I didn't want it, but then I thought so I was going to punch him in the face and punish him because of uh, all the story, but... So, yeah, they scheduled me and uh, he didn't show up again. And that totally was not a surprise for me. You know, I, I was ready for it. Uh, I was talking to my team and we were making a jokes about it, that he was not going to come and he was not going to fight. A lot of my teammates actually thought the, that he, was, he wouldn't be competing against me. Because the uh, story starts back in 2017. He came at King's in the gym where I train, and uh, he trained with me, uh, like, he stayed for one week or something like this, and uh, we spar, and after that, uh, I think he just didn't, don't want to fight me, you know, and uh, once everything happened the uh, third time, and the uh, only thing I was hoping that maybe some, they could find some, someone to fight. We even offered my, one of my teammates to fight. And we, he was down. He was there. He was there to fight. He was down to fight. Uh, but um, they found a new guy. A good guy. <laughs> he's, a, he's a beast. Man. He's a dog fighter from bantamweight. Uh, you know, of course, uh, that was a big advantage to me because he was bantamweight, I was big featherweight and um, yeah man, the big respect to the guy, he showed up, he had nothing to lose, he just got in UFC and uh, he showed so much heart and actually that was a big risk for me to take the fight all, as yeah. well, you know, like when you prepare for the one guy and suddenly they match you up with the, another guy. Most of the fighters would not take the fight, but uh, I'm, I never said the no. I always take the fight, short notice, and uh, especially when I'm prepared, I don't care who I'm going to fight. I feel like I'm already a complete fighter. Maybe I don't do takedowns, but if I need to, I can take the guy down and uh, even submit the guy. You know, so. Did you uh, did you have any time to watch tape or did no tape? Just yeah, come? yeah, yeah. We said the first yes and then we watched the tape. That was fun. So like, um, Ali calls me, my manager, and say that, hey, you want to fight this guy? We we uh, we got a replacement. I say like, please, anybody. <laughs> like I, I didn't even remember the name first time when they said uh, Irwin Rivera. I googled it. I couldn't find the. Uh, I don't know. I googled something else. You know. I googled, I checked the guy, uh, but I, there was not the uh, right name they told me first time. And uh, then, of course, uh, after I agreed the fight, then, <laughs> then we checked the fight, checked the guy, and uh, yeah, that was a good, a good matchup. He, he's, uh, he loves to brawl, he loves to come forward. At the same time, was a risky, as I mentioned, because uh, when the guy comes like that and he just big underdog, and he has nothing to lose, especially he's he's good. He's a he was a 
multiple time Titan FC champion, which yeah. is a great show, especially the Eastern Eastern US. A um, lot of fighters fight there, and then from there they come in UFC. And um, uh, let's see. if he was he was gonna catch me with uh, any blind uh, shot, that would be not a good good thing for me. So <laughs> yeah, there's a. Was, with all the pandemic and everything going on, was there ever any, like, did you always want to fight or was there always, oh, I'd rather not, I want to make sure I get a good training camp in, I want to make sure. No, no. I always want to fight? Wanted, yeah, always want to fight and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, right now, Walt is topped. It feels like the clock is uh, ticking for us. You know, it's go time is all and moving forward for for the athletes who's uh, still competing, and it yeah. it feels like the, all the attention are on us, the fighters who are fighting right now, and uh, that's a great uh, opportunity, especially for the fighters, because you know the fighting is still new sport, it's still uh, growing. Uh, all the different sports are canceled uh, events, and uh, people don't have nothing to do besides watching the fight, so. I thought that it, that would be the great opportunity for me, and um, I'll become more recognizable, and, and people are gonna see more my fights. So that's a great chance for me, and whole, actually for all the sport. If you, I don't know if you have seen my speech after the fight, I said the Dana White, uh, many thanks, and. Uh, that was from the bottom of my heart, because uh, like some of the people said, like ah. He's like uh, kissing <laughs> the dinosaur butt or whatever, but yeah. no, that was completely from bottom of my heart because um, I really, really appreciate him because uh, he's been fighting so much to make this happen because California did not allow him, Las Vegas didn't allow, um, and finally he made it, and that was a great. Yeah, it's it's really amazing what he's done in such a short period of time. He's kind of ignoring what everyone's telling him to do and just going out there and putting fights together for for not just fighters but for for people at home too it's it's really uh it's really moving and it's, it's a great thing that he's doing um let's talk a little bit about your call out afterwards it wasn't really you didn't really call him out but someone brought it up at the press conference edson barbosa um, yeah. what is what is it about that fight that that excites you yeah, man, I have so much respect for this guy. He's uh, such a great striker, and uh, he's just fun to watch. You know, he's done so much in the company. He's like ten years of ambassador of the company, and uh, big face. Uh, I would say like maybe the best striker in past ten years in UFC. Yeah. You know, all his highlights. That's what about, and uh, just wanna wanna. You know, if you get better when you have a good opponent, and mm-hmm. that's that's what that's what I want to experience. You know, I want to fight him in the cage, but after the fight we can go and I don't know, drink a beer or whatever. But I really want to have <clears throat> the fight with him in the cage because that would be the great show for the fans. Like when the first I heard about the Fight Island. Uh, it it reminds me Fight Island reminds me like uh, back in the days like when uh, Mortal Kombat two came out <laughs> first you know like it's like it's like this but in reality and imagine now me and Edson fighting on a Fight Island that would be super highlight fight I would say like with all the crazy spinning kicks and yeah. stuff like that 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 will be like the Liu Kang versus uh, uh, no Scorpion. <laughs> You're uh you you have a kickboxing background. Describe what it's like to transition to MMA. Obviously, there's a lot more to you have to take in, right? There's wrestling, there's jiu-jitsu. What's been the hardest part uh, about transitioning into mixed martial arts? Actually, my background is uh, karate, and then oh. I moved to kickboxing, so it took some time, and that was also the big experience and big. Uh, uh, and after this, uh, then when I decided to come in U.S. and start MMA, I saw the first first fight when I fought uh, in MMA. I thought you, 
didn't really need it much of experience in uh, wrestling and jiu-jitsu because uh, my background the karate uh, the style where i trained before and so i trained two, two style you know the one was kyokushin and you cannot really catch and you cannot do the takedown but in, uh, then i started to train in goju ryu and i spent a lot of years there and uh, there you can do some takedowns and even armbar you can do and footlocks but just for 10 seconds so i i learned a little bit uh, in the childhood uh, some takedowns and i thought that would be uh, just enough for my mma career but and then i fought a wrestler for my first mma fight in world series of fighting and the guy took me down i could not get up i could not defend the takedown that was the worst experience you know like I was just uh, frustrated and uh, pissed that I could not uh, fight. I could not really perform. I, that was not me, you know. Every time the fight started, I was starting well, but the guy was taking me down and giving me a hug and squeezing me and nothing. He, he didn't really do some damage on the ground, but he just hugged me, I think, more than my wife hugs me after the fight, <laughs> you know, and I go back home. So... After that, I decided to stop uh, and start training uh, in jiu-jitsu. I put my gi back again, white belt, we trained with, um, with uh, other of my teammates, and that was a uh, yeah, huge experience. And now I'm training wrestling, I'm training uh, jiu-jitsu, I'm blue belt, but I feel like I'm all at the level of purple, maybe even more. <laughs> so... I'm doing okay. I'm I'm still getting better and better every day. What's it like there at Kings? Obviously, you're working with with guys like Benil Darius, very very talented, very very skilled. Um, what's it like? What's that environment like there at Kings? Uh, my little boy wants to say hi. Let's say hi. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, Benny Benny became my brother. I mean, I don't have a uh, actual brother from my mom and dad but he he's really my brother he actually max my son's uh, godfather and uh, we became super close and he's been helping since the day one i moved in us in in everything in in my career uh, in my life to fix you know in you when you move in us and you don't have no one especially in california you need someone to help you for with their, everything so he was a guy, uh, he was an unofficial uh, manager, I would say, of me you know, from the beginning. And uh, he helps me in jiu-jitsu, he helps me in wrestling. And besides him, I have uh, multiple teammates who are my close, close uh, people to me, super close. And um, it's, it's just a huge experience. Also, we have some big names like Fabrizio Werdum. And every time he gives you a tip, like, uh, let's say, uh, last couple of months, every time he is in the gym, after we're done training, he uh, he uh, makes me stay after training and drill, like, 30 to 45 minutes, just a couple of uh, drills, like the half guard, deep half guard, a like, couple of good things that he has, you know? Like, that thing is motivates you so much because you see, like, there is a language in the gym that uh, talk, uh, we talk by the moves, you know, like, and by, um, I don't know, by the spirit that you have. Right? This language is something that only a couple of people understand. And that's what we have in the, in the Kings MMA. You know? It's about the respect and experience, a lot of different things. It's about the martial arts and... We are blessed to have such a great team with so many of the huge and athletes and names, you know. Yeah, yeah. I can see that, like, uh, little damage uh, after the fight. Is there any injuries, anything like that? And if, if, if not, when do you want to get back in there? I want to get back soon. <laughs> I'm the crazy <laughs> one. You know, I've been in UFC since, uh, like, uh, September, end of September. It's been, like, seven months. I've already fought three times. Uh, two fights already in 2020. I don't think many people have done with two wins in 2020 so far. And um, I want to get back soon and fight again. 
it's just my hobby, man. I love it, you know, like, like this, let's say that this week is my the only week I'm, I'm taking a break. I have uh, my right leg bruise because I've been kicking uh, past last fight a lot and a uh, couple of times when I kick uh, my opponent in uh, inside the leg kick in the knee, I knew he had the damage before, so he lost one of his fights with inside low kick, so I was doing the same. Uh, and uh, since it's got swollen and swollen, I still was keep kicking, right? And also the high kicks a couple of times and a couple of my body kicks he checked with the elbow, so it's really big damage, especially when I kick because I'm the kicker guy. <laughs> and uh, it, that's the only thing what I have, it's just uh, swelling already going down. Besides this, I don't have any injury. I'm just keeping myself. I'm doing some apps at home already. So I, wanna, I don't want to miss my cardio. Finally, my cardio was much better than my other fights, and I want to keep myself in shape. And if uh, happens to fight Thailand, and if Edson also will agree about the fight, that will be the dream fight. I like that fight. I like that fight a lot. It's mm-hmm. Both uh, both have very very good kicks. Do you have a date in mind? Is it like July, August? No, no. I mean, I'm ready whenever they they uh, ask me to fight again. Actually, I mean, I'm I'm messaging them every day. We talked with Sean yesterday, with Ali daily. We I'm talking and I'm a little bit annoying them, but. That's how it is, man. I want to fight soon again. What are you doing in your free time when you're not doing, like you said, cardio and abs? Is there anything you're doing? Any TV shows you're watching? Anything like that? Uh, yeah. So I was watching a little bit uh, Last Dance uh, from Michael Jordan. He's my, one of my uh, favorite athletes ever. Uh, what shows are we watch all the all the shows like last uh, few months since the quarantine time? Um, one of the zombie movies I was watching last night, but we've been watching this uh, past whole month. I forgot the name. Uh, Tamo, Rafia in Mass, zombie movies. Walking Dead, yeah, that's Walking Dead. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, everybody yeah. loves that show. Yeah. So there's uh there's one big title fight now. That's the only one that's kind of been official. Uh, Amanda Nunes and Felicia Spencer. Are you a, are you a fan of, of of watching fights outside of outside of competing? Yeah, sure, I am. Uh, I am, but um, yeah, they are not my. Yeah, what? I'm, uh, not, I'm not a huge fan of them. But... You're not a huge fan of them. Yeah. Do you uh, yeah. do you have any do you have any predictions for that fight? I think I'm under gonna beat. Yeah. And I what about? I'm under gonna win. Yeah. And what about in uh, what about in your division? What are your thoughts on on Alexander Volkanovsky and and Max Holloway when they fight? How do you how do you have that one going? Uh, how I had the, for the beginning uh, when they fought or for, for the future? For the future when they rematch. I think um, Max can figure uh, Alex out, you know, like maybe the first time it was um, he, for him, it was something new, you know, like short guy who was well-rounded and he was coming all, but if Max figures out uh, the distance, which he's really good in that, especially with his boxing, he can win the fight, all right, man. Well, uh, thank you for taking the time and, and incredible performance. And, and like, I hope you get the Edson Barbosa fight. That would be crazy. Yeah. And hopefully it's on Fight Island. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time, uh, your interest. And also a uh, quick, uh, I'm going to uh, mention my sponsors, which I really want to thank them. Um, Achara Bet, Petrocas Energy and Bad Boy Company. These people have been uh supporting me for a long time and uh, without them that w- everything would be so hard to do it so especially for me moving guy from georgia and living in california also a lot of shout out to my team kings mma the chase your dream cardio program and uh 
my wrestling coach, Mike Ferris. All right, perfect. There it is. All right, man. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, brother. All the best. Thank you. Take care. And please uh, send me the link later or something. Yeah, I will for sure. All right. All the best. Thank you.